Hey guys, with the introduction of the fairy type, what do you think the 19th type will be? Hmm, I'm thinking sound. <laughs> Greetings all, I am from the future, and I can reveal that the 19th type is... All of them combined. What? So Pokemon World's just wrapped up, and of course with the closing ceremony comes a trailer about the Scarlet and Violet DLC. In this trailer we saw brand new Pokemon Iron Crown and Raging Bolt in game for the first time. Sadly though, the Electric Giraffe was not the most captivating part of the trailer. That award goes to the brand new way of terrestrializing Pokemon that turns them into something we've never seen before. And this is very interesting to me because, well, the terrestrialization mechanic changes your Pokemon's type, which means if we can't identify what it is, then... Oh my god, calm down, this might be the 19th Pokemon type. And you know what else makes me hyped? Take a look at this lovely specimen right here. Wait, not that, I meant this. Because Opera GX is on a quest to make your browser less boring. GX mods give you all the customization you want and then some. I'm talking wallpapers. Wallpapers with added music, keyboard sounds, and opening and closing tab sounds, all of which you can turn on and off whenever you like. There's always tons of new mods being added to the GX store, which can be found through the mods tab on the side here, like this Gengar mod that comes equipped with Pokemon sound effects. But why else should you install Opera? Well, if you like a good bargain, the GX corner provides you with a handpicked list of new releases for every single console. Let me just switch to Switch here and bang, there's the game I'm talking about. Opera is also integrated with every messenger app under the sun, such as WhatsApp and Discord. And if live streams are more your thing, you can log into your Twitch through the browser and have it notify you when your favourite streamer is live. You also won't miss your Chrome extensions, because Opera is compatible with all of them, and they can even be installed directly from the Chrome store. So, what are you waiting for? Use the link in the description to install for free today. And thanks again to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. As you'd expect from any fandom, people immediately began speculating on Twitter what this could be, with a healthy amount of misinformation spread in there too because, well, it's on Twitter. I think it's every type in one. I think it gives you a combined move that has both your Pokemon's types, and my personal favourite, it being the question mark type. You know, the one that used to be Curse's type before they got rid of it for being a dumb idea. Yeah, let's bring that one back. So, what do you do when there's a lot of speculation going around? Well, obviously, you stir the pot more by adding your own speculation and hope people believe you because, hey, no one would ever lie on the internet, right? First, though, I'd like to establish some concrete facts about what we know about the new type. So at least I can say I have some evidence in my corner. Side note, new type is what I'll be referring to this thing as from now on, because unknown Pokemon terrestrialization phenomena just doesn't roll off the tongue as well. So, first thing we know about new type, when you terrestrialize you receive a Terra Crown that hasn't been seen in the game yet, and the type icon next to Terra Blast also shifts into a symbol that hasn't been seen in the game either. No other symbol changes, which leads me to believe that Terra Blast is the only move that this type can be, and when this new type Terra Blast is used against Against a Dragonite, it is listed as effective, which means neutral damage in the type chart. These facts led me to believe that first of all, new type is not every type of one. I'm sorry, but this would be so confusing to learn for every Pokemon, and the new symbol on Terra Blast kind of negates that for me as well. Additionally, if it was every type of one, then new type would suck. Do you know how many Pokemon have immunities to certain types? It wouldn't affect Dragonite for one, since the ground typing would turn damage to absolute zero. This also means new type doesn't give you a combined attack of both your Pokemon's types. Otherwise, the ice and dragon combination of Baxcalibur would have made Terra Blast super effective against Dragonite and also permanently scarred it. Additionally, on Pokemon's official website, it refers to new type as the 19th Terra type, not the 19th type, further beating the new addition to the type chart allegations. So we've established it isn't a some combination of types, which therefore leads to the theory of it being something new entirely as much more plausible. It was here I realised 
that we've seen something like this before. Well, you haven't if you're like 13 and you're watching this video. But back in 2003, Pokemon Coliseum introduced Shadow Pokemon into the mix. Shadow Pokemon were angry little dudes corrupted by a machine, and they had some interesting mechanics I think are relevant here to discussion. They could possess a wield moves of the Shadow type, but kept their original Pokemon typing. No one, not even Shadow Lugia, was ever a Shadow type Pokemon. In XD Gale of Darkness, Shadow moves were super effective on every Pokemon except Shadow Pokemon themselves. I bring this up because it's an example of a type that solely interacts with a phenomena in a game, without the main type of the Pokemon changing. Now back to some regularly scheduled facts. We know new type will be introduced in the Indigo Disc DLC, since in the trailer we are battling inside of the Blueberry Academy. This DLC focuses around the Pokemon Terrapagos, who in the Scarlet and Violet books is heavily implied to be the cause of terrestrialization, and even has a form that looks very similar to the Terra Crown that new type grants the Pokemon. As part of my research, I looked at an example of the interaction between a new game mechanic mechanic, and set Pokemon that created the mechanic according to lore. In Sword and Shield, Eternatus is revealed to be the reason why Dynamax Pokemon exist, and one of this weird alien's signature moves is Dynamax Cannon, a move that looks like your standard dragon attack, but also gives a double boost to Dynamax Pokemon. If Terrapagos really is responsible for terrestrialization, then what if we could see a similar interaction here? I propose that new type will deal neutral damage to all Pokemon, such as the Dragonite in these screenshots. But if said Pokemon terrestrializes, then it will deal super effective damage no matter what type they transform into. You wouldn't gain the same type attack bonus from this type though, as when you transform, your original type would stay the same. This is similar to how in Pokemon Colosseum and XD, Shadow Pokemon would not receive same type attack bonus for using Shadow moves. This would make it less strong than if you just use a strong super effective move on the terrestrialized Pokemon to hopefully balance it out a bit. Okay then, well what about defensive type interactions? Well it's kind of the same except as previously mentioned, you keep your original type, but all moves that are boosted by terrestrialization are now resisted. For example, a sizzle with new type would still be cooked by flamethrower, but resist said flamethrower if the Pokemon using it terrestrialized into the fire type. And of course, if a new type terror blast hit a Pokemon that was also so new type, the damage would be neutral since the super effective of the terrestrialized target and the not very effective of the terrestrialized move would cancel each other out. Yeah, okay, it's kind of confusing, but to be fair, so is this turning into this, so. And I also think it's important to mention that in these video game closing ceremonies, we're usually seeing new things that are being added to the Pokemon video game series to balance out VGC, and a lot of recent play in VGC has actually been dominated by offensive terrestrialization, with Pokemon such as Fluttermane, Urshifu, and Golden Go being able to increase their already high damage stab moves to even more ridiculous levels. Introducing a new defensive counterplay to these extremely high damage moves may improve viability for defensive terrestrialization that hasn't seen much apart from dodging a cheeky Amoongus' spore. But maybe I'm completely wrong and all this research was a waste of time. I'd love to know your guys' thoughts on what this new terrestrialization is, so leave a comment below and I'll respond to a couple of them. Thanks as well to all my patrons for supporting the channel, and this was HRAZ and I hope you enjoyed!